Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of the Firestorm Podcast. Uh, as always, Trent is here. Say hi. Hello, everybody. And today, we are going to be talking about video games, but not just any video games. We're going to yes. be talking about the video games that we grew up with, um, that are our childhood favorites, and then on to our current favorites. So, just so it kind of... You know, we both grew up playing video games, a whole lot of video games, as mm -hmm. most kids nowadays do. So I think it's cool to to kind of talk about what games kind of brought us brought brought us to where we are today. And I, and I think I think we were very lucky because at least for me, I'm not sure for you, but at least for me, I grew up in the PS2 era when the PS2 did, yep. was just mm -hmm. starting to peak, and that was a fantastic era of gaming. Yeah, it was. There was I because my first console was a PS2. Yeah, so. we had a family console, a, f a family yeah, console of a PS2. Because apparently, uh, I hear uh, stories of my sisters and my parents playing old, old PS1 games, and uh, when they were younger, and then when they got the PS2, because you could play PS1 games on the PS2, they yeah. uh, continued playing them, and then. I kind of took over because I got massively, I got more into gaming than any of them. Yeah. So I kind of took over nice. this, like, this PlayStation is mine, but it's not. I, I felt like a it. dick afterwards. I, I, <laughs> when I got older, I was just like, I kind of claim the whole, the home console and I feel like yeah. But um, yeah, either way. So both of us started off with the PS2 then. Yeah. So I, I, it was like PS2 and then also the, um, the DS, the first, like, the, I think my, like, DS Lite. Oh, uh, yeah, D yeah, DS Lite, yeah, for me. Yep. I had PS2 for the family console, then my first personal little thing was a Game Boy Advance, and I mm, had a bunch mm -hmm. of old Game Boy games, like, oh, my yeah, God, Yeah, we had, that a, was we had a Game Boy Advance, too. Oh. And then, and then, I think, yeah, we skipped the original DS and got the DS Lite, and that was something else. That was... Yeah, I never really liked, to be honest, like, the uh, design of the original DS. It, like, wasn't terribly appealing to me it was it was ugly and thick so yeah. i was like no and not the good <laughs> kind of thick no the bad thick the one with a k Ugh, yeah yuck disgusting but um <laughs> no so yeah the ps2 era of gaming was a very very good era like yeah there was I just so know. many good games i by the way if you want to if you want to tell us your favorite games make sure to comment on the video below uh, comment in the comment section or just shout at us on our social media at firestorm pod yes. on facebook and twitter yep and uh yeah we're trying to or just shout at the screen we might hear you we we might you know if you're you never in know. one of our countries if you're in one of our countries it might be some echo yeah. effect we might be able to bounce back i'll just call gus up randomly and be like oh yeah, i heard someone yelling tony hawk so i was yeah. like i think i think <laughs> oh, we got nice. a listener guy oh nice <laughs> Anyway, yeah. um, so what were some of your favorite games in the PS2? So, um, probably one of the first games that I uh, got into on the PS2 was actually Gran Turismo 3. Probably one of the uh, only, yes. probably one of the only, like, racing games, like, kind of more mainstream racing games that I really got into. And granted, at the time, I was probably, like, five or six, um, mm. but I would always play with my dad, because technically the PS2 was my dad's, like, he bought it, but he let basically i was the only one of my two brothers and i that was old enough to play or really understand what i was doing so he yep. basically let me use it um and so he uh, he and i would always play gran turismo 3 and then eventually i branched off into other things but yeah that i don't remember much of anything about it other than like i to this day i am able to recognize certain cars and brands because i played so much gran turismo 3 Otherwise, yeah, I know nothing fair. about cars. That's absolutely fair. That sounds almost yeah. the same as my best mate. He grew up with a uh, Gran Turismo, Need for Speed Underground, and him and his dad oh, used to play it all the yeah. all the time. He is like, I was never that much into racing games, so I never got that's any. The, yeah, of them. like I said, that's the only racing game I ever really got into, and I was like six. Yeah, but like whenever I went over to his, he was had a stack of racing games, and it was pretty cool actually. I, I remember Need for Speed Underground. Jesus Christ! Mm. The only underground I'm familiar with is Tony Hawk's Underground. That yeah. shit was my jam. Tony Hawk's. 
Oh, that that yeah. for like six months. What a, it made me want to become a skateboarder. It yeah. wanted to become, like, I bought a skateboard I, yeah, and everything. Dude, I remember playing a Tony Hawk game when I was pretty young, and I, I tried to learn how to skateboard and couldn't get it to turn, so I gave up. No, I could, see. <laughs> thing is, I like back on the farm. We had literally it was a farm. There was no solid ground to skate on. There was oh. little little like. You could skate just around the house, where it was a little bit smoother, but mm. the rest of it was this really rough brick, like, ground, and it was just like, this isn't going to work. So yeah. well, I thought, well, maybe I could take my skateboard somewhere else and learn how to skate. But I was six or seven, and I never re- remembered to take my skateboard anywhere, and yeah, it just didn't work out. Nice. You know, you know, if I lived in a I different house, I feel like house, every kid wants to be a skater at some point, and then they, no one ever goes through with it, except for like a couple yeah. people. Yeah, no. So instead, I just replay Tony Hawk's Underground over and over again. So you like, can live vicariously through Tony Hawk. See, I, I was, I was a weird kid. As in, I would always reset my games and replay them, mm. always expecting something new. Like I, I just really enjoyed retrying different things even though like, it wasn't one of those games that had multiple paths it was literally yeah. just like it's the same shit it's just you can score differently but i was a weird kid as in i actually liked resetting my games multiple times and i, I don't think know I did why that too. i don't know if that's i think that's just because like as a kid it's probably like a psychological thing like you get more like you enjoy just like replaying things more because you think like oh i enjoyed this a lot Maybe if I do it again, I'll enjoy it the same amount, you know? Or, like, and then there's maybe some element of familiarity you have with the game, like, because instead of jumping into something new, you have, like, this... You're like, hey, I know this game. It's fun. Let's play, you know? Yeah. I tell you, tell you what, I will always remember in my head every single line of dialogue for the first 20 minutes of Final Fantasy X because nice. I was a dumb motherfucker... And just as you get out the intro scene in Final Fantasy X and you're Titus stranded on this, like, island thing, and you have to, you literally, you have to find, like, ch- flint and steel and charcoal to start a fire. Huh. I could never fl- find Fantasy one of RPGs those items. for you. I know, but I could never find one of those items. Not only, not until I was like fourteen did I <laughs> actually did I actually like Google where to find this item, and it was like in this really obscure corner of this room. And like literally, as a kid, I just replayed the intro to Final Fantasy X over and over. That's why I love the um the so- like two songs from the soundtrack, Otherworld, ah. which is like a so you need to listen to Otherworld and Run. Um, I will send them to you. They are okay. Sick. Because Otherworld's actually like a metal song and it's fucking nice. dope. But um, yeah, Final Fantasy X, I had a lot of <laughs> memories of just running around this. I even got my mum to help me once. It's just like, <laughs> Where the- I have to find a motherfucking flint and steel. And I couldn't find it. And none of us could find it <laughs> until like... It's you- like you get the whole <laughs> family involved. Someone get this nah. goddamn flint and steel for me. Nah, it was just my mum, because my mum had somewhat interest in gaming, because she, she was the one, I think she was the one who came up with the idea of buying the PlayStation and the PlayStation 2 for the girls, mm. like for my sisters, and then she just kind of got interested and helped me trying to find stuff in my games, and then she just eventually stopped caring, because she, <laughs> she ran out yeah. of love for games, but that's fair, but some people yeah. do. But yeah, Not no, me! <laughs> not me. See, not I, me. I, I, I'm in an odd position with gaming, though, because I'm—I don't really get into the new shit unless it really take like captures my imagination. Hmm. Like, as of recently, like, well, my most recent game is Gears Five. That's because I love the Gears of War series, yeah. and then before that, it would have been Tekken Seven, which is part of the Tekken series. But it, like, I haven't really bought a new game and gone through it in a long time. Like, probably the most recent original game that I decided to buy and go through was Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. Ah. I recently got an SAO game. I haven't touched it, though. I want to. 
It's it seems like <laughs> one of those games you have to you have to like devote a lot of time to. See, so like, that's what I thought with Fatal Bullet, but it was just so enjoyable. Like it was just so nice, like yeah. easy to breeze through and like quite enjoyable. That I was like, all right, I can get into it. And yeah. then the more recent updates came with DLCs and online multiplayer. But I haven't really, like I bought them all. I have I, like I bought them all, but I haven't got into them because I just mm. can't be fucking back into it. Like yeah. the only other game currently that's kind of captured my imagination is Code Vein. It just mm, that gotcha. just looks pr- that just looks pretty sick. But yeah. Other th- other than that, it's kind of like I just realized this has gone way off the rails. Um, let's go back to PS2. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh yeah, let's, sorry. Let's go in chronological order here. Okay, so enough, um, I'll enough. go ahead. I'll go ahead and start. Um, yeah, go with ahead. like some of the the PS2 games that I had. Um, before I actually get into PS2, another game that is actually a big part of my childhood and actually was a part of. I'm sure a lot, like any any Americans out there watching this, I'm sure you've probably at least heard of it. A game called Toontown, which is uh, <laughs> a really old MMO made by Disney. Um, oh. It's, yeah, it's, it's, there's actually a free version of it now you can get. It's called Toontown Rewritten. But it's basically this really, really overly cartoony um, MMO game where you can go around and you have these silly items and shit that you chuck at these robots the they're, they're they're called cogs and they invade the uh your little areas they basically invade civilization and you can just chuck pies at them and shit and uh <laughs> they die it's pretty it's pretty funny i got actually started playing it um the the new free version uh last year and i managed to get pretty far but there's a point like in a lot of mmos where it's really grind heavy and you're doing a lot of like just the same shit over and over again and it gets really boring yeah. Um, and that's with any MMO, so it's not really at fault for that. It's just how it is. Um, but yeah, that was a big part of my childhood. I would always play that on my little computer I had that was... It, at home, we had an office. My mom's desk was on one side and my oh desk my was on the God. opposite side. And the so I would play it on my little com- on my little desktop. <laughs> it, well, it was my desktop. It, it's fucking destroyed now. Who knows where it is? But it's, um, it's just this little... It was this little desktop I had right across from my mom. And while my mom was probably working on whatever she was doing, I would just sit there and play fucking Toontown with the obnoxious music playing in the background. I don't know how she lived with me, you, but... Um, you just reminded me of a whole other era I had with childhood video games when I was even younger in the PS2 era on the home office computer. Yep. Fucking hell, who has those anymore? Jesus No Christ. one. No one oh. does. It was just computers are way more accessible now. Yeah. Infinitely will... more accessible. Even than, you know, 2005, 2006. Jeez, it's crazy. But well, yeah, you, it, you, you reminded me. You yeah, reminded me of a whole other era of childhood video games when I was but an, in, but an infant, but I'll let you continue for now, and then I'll get into that later. Yeah, so, yeah, Toontown was one of those games, like, some MMOs you had to pay every month. My parents just paid for me because I liked it so much. Um, so, yeah, that was an interesting, interesting game, but it's actually pretty fun. Like, if you want to get into it, you can get Toontown rewritten. It's really goofy, but if you go into it knowing that, then it's actually, like, pretty fun. And there's still a decent amount of people that play it. So, um, and it's, you know, the MMO features still work. So, yeah, it's actually pretty interesting. But okay. that was pretty much the only game I played on, like, the desktop I had when I was, like, five. Um, well, and, go for my it. alternative of that, my version of that would have been... Putt Putt saves saves the zoo. Putt what Putt the fuck? saves the zoo. It's there's this whole series of games uh, based around Putt Putt, which is this car. It's literally like a little purple car with eyes, and literally he just goes around and it's kind of like a point click solving game for kids, where uh-huh. you got to like click on different options and like try and figure out where on the screen you can do things and like fix things and like i was a younging and i loved putt putt save the zoo it was so i don't know why i just it was i enjoyed it so much yeah but for me like it, it was about an hour long but again i was the kid that replayed everything so I replayed it multiple times, and yeah. I had a, had a good time with it. And I already just remembered it the other day because I followed this um, Facebook page called Australian Millennials, and it just randomly brings up shit from when from like the 
early 90s, late 2000s, like TV mm. advertisements to, to give you nostalgia. And it somehow brought up theme for Pud Pud Saves the Zoo. And I'm like, oh my fucking God, yeah. it's, it's alive. And I've just searched it up on Google and they put it on Steam. What the hell? Dude, you should get it. <laughs> I might actually get it. <laughs> I might get it again. I'm not even joking. Nice. Yep, it's here. Pud Pud Saves the Zoo is back, Incredible. motherfuckers. Oh my God. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. for me... That was basically my childhood game on the computer. Like before nice. I got my Game Boy, before I properly got into the PlayStation, yeah. it was the computer and it was a few childhood games. Like in school, there was a few like uh, games designed purely to help kids like get better with like typing and all that. Like yeah. they, they made those games. Like that was a type quick, there was mathletics and stuff like that in school. Yeah. But yeah, for me, you had that game. I had Putt Putt Saves the Zoo. Nice. <laughs> oh, nice. Jesus. I um, can't believe I forgot about that thing. That's yeah. amazing. Moving into uh, PS2, actually, now. Um, other than Gran Turismo, which I mentioned earlier, uh, a big part of the PS2 for me was the Sly Cooper games, which I still oh. love to this day. It's um, for those of you who don't know, they're actually all incredible. Um, there are the first three are for the PS2. Um, I think it was 02. Then the next one came out in 03 or 04, and then the third one came out in 05. Um, so that was still all PS2 era. The 05 was late PS2 era, but um, they're basically the, the it's a platformer basically, but it's like it's you play as um, the Sly Cooper, who is a um, like a thief basically. He's a raccoon. They're all animals. It's um, anthropomorphic animal stuff. But it's because um, yeah, obviously was that was a lot say. of that was a lot of PS2 uh, era. Like it was a lot of anthropomorphic. You know, you had Crash Bandicoot. You had your whatever. Um, but um, so Sly Cooper is a really great platformer. I still play them to this day every so often. Like I'll just go back and replay them. They're not horribly long long games. Well, the first one isn't. The fir this the second and third one, and then the fourth one. Um, are kind of long, but, um, like, not horribly long. But they're basically, like, this little platforming game where you play as a thief, and in the later games you play as other characters, too. But you basically go around doing these different thieving missions, and then you're, you're kind of seen as the good guy, even though you're technically a thief. You're basically <laughs> doing all these things for justice, or whatever, like, but I'm you still have to run... I'm you, st you still have, Yeah, you still have to run from the police and shit, but it's um, it's basically the only police you ever have to run from is this one really well. I want I was gonna say hot chick, but she's a fox. So I mean, <laughs> but she's a fox with tits. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so oh no, yeah. we're going back into this realm. I don't like oh, it. Oh yeah. So but the oh, Sly the Cooper games are art. Rejoice. All, all incredible. Like just genuinely like so. I think the Sly Cooper games. Like, they're, I think they're all rated E, but the dialogue in those games, they're, they're, they're written by actual adults, and, like, I didn't actually catch any of the really funny wordplay or, you know, just some of the phrases that were used in the dialogue until I played them again when I was, like, 17 or 18, and it's just really clever. Like, the dialogue and writing in, the, in those games are all incredible. Um, that's what I like about certain like even like kids movies and kids yeah. games like they can they can have referential lines in there which can yeah. mean a lot of different things but unless you're an adult or a bit older you won't catch them yeah and it's like so funny when you replay or rewatch something and it's just like yeah. oh my god <laughs> that yeah. is amazing the dialogue in the especially the first three games the first three games were made by Sucker Punch um, they're all like the dialogue is seamless like it's just it feels like um, what's something I could compare it to? Kind of like, um, regular show. I, I say regular show because they, all of the voice actors for regular show, like, got together and recorded their lines in the same room so that it would flow more naturally like a conversation. That's what oh, Sly nice. Cooper feels like. It feels like very, it feels, all the dialogue feels very natural, and then the gameplay is smooth, the The missions are all fun, for the most part. Um, you know, you have your every so often, like, frustrating mission, whatever gimmicky mm. missions um but they're all like for the most part really fun and clever and especially the second and third games like everything adds up 
in a really really clever way and brings you to the the final bat like the final mission for each area like there's you know you go into certain areas or whatever and then there's a final mission where you take down the boss for that area and it's all really really cleverly done so if you have the opportunity if you have a ps vita i think ps3 um get the sly cooper hd collection um it's probably like 20 bucks by now but like <laughs> it's, it's so worth it like you will have probably i think if you're playing it through it the first time i'll probably venture at least 20 to 25 hours of just really enjoyable gameplay through all three of those like i enjoy the shit out of all the first three sly cooper games um there was actually a fourth one which is also for ps3 and ps vita which was made by um senzaru because sucker punch left the series like they stopped developing after the third one and um if they wanted to continue it the fourth one is okay i don't think it's as good as the second or third one but because it feels like the dialogue isn't as well written and the missions are kind of off a little bit like you can tell someone else developed the games but all the yeah. voice actors come back so the fourth one exists but if you really want some really <clears throat> solid gameplay the hd collection for ps3 or ps vita i have it for my vita because i don't i don't i don't have a ps3 but um yeah sly cooper was a huge part of that ps2 era for me even though i didn't understand all of the references yeah, uh, if you have <laughs> any of those, go play them. Highly encourage that. Uh, they're awesome. And then other than that, uh, Sonic Heroes for PS2 I was really into. I am still I still play nice. Sonic now, but Sonic Heroes, that was a big part of it. Um, obviously, I don't feel like I need to talk about that as much since it's a more well-known series. Um, and then other than that, um, around that same time was when I got into Pokemon, which we'll talk about probably a bit later. Um, do you yes, have any, once we... any uh, PS2 games? Any other PS2 I have games, Trent? I have, a, I have a couple here because, as I said, when I was very, very young and I was on the home computer, I swear I had a few other PC games, but the one that really sticks in my mind and stuck with me just because I thought it was great was Putt Putt Save the Zoo. But yeah. moving on to the PS2 era, um, as I said, uh, I had Final Fantasy X but never got past the first 20 minutes because I was a weird kid. Yeah. Um, the only, we only had two uh, games for Crash Bandicoot. Uh, gotcha. Crash, Twi Crash Twin Sanity, which is like one where you and Neo Cortex are going through the a, an entire different story. But again, we never progressed far in it because I didn't know how to play the game. Nice. Uh, the, the other one was Crash Nitro Kart. Was with, mm. that was like the PS2 GameCube version of the racing game, and it was so much fun. I loved that. Nice. And then, um, yeah, Tony Hawk's on the ground. Loved it. Replayed it multiple times. Fantastic stuff. And then uh, Simpsons Hit and Run, which many many people know about and reflect on today as being one of the best fucking Simpsons games in nice. existence. And it was phenomenal. But then the game that obviously stuck with me the most, for obvious reasons, was Tekken 4. Mm. Uh, the first Tekken game I ever played, and I actually, I, when I got Tekken 7, my mum even said, I remember when I got you Tekken 4 because I thought it would just be like a joke gimmicky game, like just a little fighting game just for you to get into because they were trying to get me into doing karate. Huh. But they didn't realise how dark Tekken 4 actually is like nice. if you go through the endings for the for the Mishima and the Kazama family like it is so dark but it's so awesome like, I, I loved Tekken 4 and then I got Tekken 5 later on and that was kind of like it, it, it really impacted me it, it, it made me want to create you know, get further into the games. It made me want to create my own stories. Like Tekken really heavily influenced my stories, and it's just nice. It kind of stuck with me. Like I, I missed out on Tekken Six for the Xbox 360, but then when I got into Tag Tournament Two and Seven with the Xbox 360, I just I fell back in love with the, with the series, and I bought all the games. Tekken definitely stuck with me the longest out of all these games. But um. Gotcha. Then I got my own Game Boy, which we'll move on to. Now. Yeah, so um, so pretty much the only thing that really matters for DS was Pokemon. I first yep. got into uh, <laughs> I first I think my first game was actually it was either 
Ruby or Fire Red. I can't remember which one it was, but I played one of those briefly. I never beat them, but then I moved on to Diamond, which I got for Christmas one year. High and five, man. Diamond yes. first DS game. High yeah. five. Oh, yeah. And Diamond, obviously, most kids our age, uh, like, you know, we were... You you were 1999, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, a kid like 1999, 2000 kids. Obviously, we were Sinnoh boys. So mm-hmm. we, because yep, that was definitely. when that was when we basically were like, like those games came out around the time we were able to actually use our brains properly. So mm-hmm. um, that so Sinnoh as a kid captured my imagination completely. Uh, like just the like, going into like just the adventure element. I think. Um, Sinnoh has one of the best regions aesthetically and like just design wise I think the adventure el- like element of Sinnoh just going around and like doing all these different things and then that combined with the music really just puts you into those set into that setting it, it was, was a perfect incredible. balance of like a, a story that you can get into when you're young a fantastic soundtrack and bright imagery to just like really yeah like keep your eyes focused and keep you intrigued in what's going on and yes. i loved the sino games and yeah my, for me my first game was emerald mm. and i have fond memories of me and my best mate with our game boy advances and pokemon emerald and hiding the game boys from the teachers at recess and lunch nice. and we would just play emerald constantly reset yeah. it play at different times build different teams and like uh it was it was oh, those yeah. good childhood memories but then 100 yeah. percent, as soon as i got my ds Lite and pokemon diamond i was off i was i was oh yeah ship was sailing but yeah diamond like I, I don't know why not a lot of people got into pearl but diamond that just ooh, that was next yeah. level for me that, yeah diamond I loved is everything incredible. about it yeah, well, I mean, in retrospect, it's not really that good because we have platinum. But like, yeah. yeah but if you look back on it, like, if you're gonna play any of the Sinnoh games, you're gonna play platinum. But because platinum yeah. is like, even like, especially just as a game, it just feels at least a solid level above Diamond and Pearl. Just and just um, compared to Diamond and Pearl, it's like a little bit quicker. There's less fluff and grinding, and then yeah. you got the whole added thing with the reverse world and Giratina, and you yeah. kind of like just. It's a, just a little bit more interesting all around. It is a little but, bit more interesting. And there's more Pokemon yeah, but, available, which is nice. And, yeah, that's true. But, yeah, Diamond was the first yeah, one. Yeah, Diamond was the first one for me. It That just, like, ca- absolutely captured my imagination. So, you know, as a kid, I would even trade with my little brother, who also had Diamond, with some of my friends, like my neighbors and stuff. We would just trade so that... Um, I could like I tr- I remember trading them each for um, a starter so that I could have all three of the starters in yep. my game. Um, so yeah, that was so that was when it like really took off. Obviously, um, neither my brother nor that friend of mine are into Pokemon anymore. But I, I'm the oldest brother and I'm the only one that's into Pokemon. But you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, <laughs> whatever, but, screw whatever. You. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, so that was Diamond from there in the DS. I played, actually, I played, I, have I, I think I've told you to play Mystery Dungeon before, but Mystery he Dungeon. I've mentioned it once before, yeah, yes. Yeah, so M- Mystery Dungeon, I got into Explorers of Time. I, I didn't play the Rescue Team ones until very recently. Um, but yeah, I got into Blue, or not Blue Rescue Team, I got into uh, Explorers of Time. That was the first video game that ever made me cry. Um, I won't spoil anything if you haven't played it, but it's probably one of the best told stories and probably best written stories of anything Pokemon or anything on the Nintendo DS. It's like, wow. yeah, it's like incredible. So if you have the, if you're like, if you're able to get invested into that story and you like don't mind the Mystery Dungeon format, uh, highly recommend just get a fucking emulator. It's 2019. Like, <laughs> just like go fucking play it anything any way you can like um but explorers of sky is the way to go now but um yeah that was my next game from there i also love the pokemon ranger games um i, I was never... gonna mention uh, yeah. which one has the manaphy egg 
I believe that's... Sh no, that's the first one. It's the first one, I think. Okay. I never played well, the first one, but I played... Truly noted. Yeah, I played the Shadows of Almia <laughs> one. Yeah. yeah. I played the Shadows of Almia, which was the second one. Shadows of Almia is probably the darkest one. Um, I don't remember much about it. I just remember that there's like a dark ride at the end or something. Shadows. Well, it has Ooh. shadows in the name. Yeah, so... You kind so of yeah, there's kind a dark ride. Little bit of there's edginess. a dark ride at the end. Um, so that was related to Diamond and Pearl, and then I also I think that this was probably my favorite Ranger game. I haven't played the first one, but I it's probably still gonna be my favorite. Guardian Signs. Um, that was based on uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but also still for the DS because you know it needed the touchscreen thing. Um, but yeah, Guardian Signs is probably my favorite Ranger game. Um, it's really really fun. Just a whole lot of fun to play through uh, is Guardian Signs and. Uh, so yeah, and that, those were probably the biggest, like, I don't think I, I played much else other than Pokemon on my DS. Sonic Rush, no, maybe. <laughs> that neither, was it. because for me, like, I had a couple other Game Boy games, like, I had the Incredibles Game Boy game, I had mm. SpongeBob, the movie Game Boy game, but for the DS era, it was just Pokemon for me. I don't, I don't remember playing any D other DS game. Like, I remember my mate had, like, a Monster Hunter game for DS, which I thought yeah. was really cool. But other than that, nah, it's just DS, because I remember my sister bought me Pearl when she realized I really liked Diamond, and then Platinum came along, and then... Um, but around this time also is when uh, a lot more family members started living in the house, and we bought a Nintendo Wii. Yep, same. So, uh, me personally, I kind of zoned out of playstation at this point in time yes yeah, because all i had was my pokemon games on my ds which it grew all the way to black 2 and white 2 so i was in it for the long haul nice but then we also for the family had the nintendo wii and we just played a bunch of wii games like i remember every friday night we would have a wii bowling tournament and nice. it was so much fun it was some of the best parts of my childhood like i could play DS and Pokemon whenever I wanted. We would always play together as a family on the Wii, and it was just some of the best memories I have. Yeah. And it was so much fun. Um, yeah, but I, I followed on Pokemon with the DSs. I got, like, a DSi XL, and um, yeah, it grew DSi. all the way to Black... Yeah, it grew all the way to Black 2 and White 2. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of when I dropped off with Pokemon. Gotcha. Because... I, I don't know what happened. It, it, like around that time is when I kind of went from DS to... I started going on the PC a little bit more. Yeah. Because I remember I had two games on the PC which stuck out to me. Um, a free MMO RPG, which I just searched up, called Adventure Quest. Uh-huh. I remember I got that. into this game. I got you remember it? Okay, good. Because yeah, I got into I this remember, game. I, I never played it, but I remember like some of my friends played it. Yeah, I got into it because of my cousin. And he was phenomenal at it. But, like, I really enjoyed it. But, again, like, after a while, it just became too grindy. Yeah. But it released in 2002. And even today, it still updates weekly. So huh. that, that just shows Jeez. you how the long haul of this game. Yeah. It just, it's still going. But then uh, the other one on PC was World of Warcraft. Ooh. The, I... This wasn't good. The, for, for me, this was year seven, the year before high school. Mm. I spent two months playing World of Warcraft, got like a level 40 character, and my grades tanked. <laughs> my, my grades went so shit because all I thought about was World of Warcraft. This nice. was my first addiction because literally I would wake up two hours before school, play World of Warcraft. I'd get home from school, play World of Warcraft till dinner. Then nice. I'll do my homework. And it was a bad period. And then my mum just, because it was on the home computer, she just uninstalled it, made sure I didn't go into the office so I couldn't play it. And then I just stopped caring about it. But yep. yeah, that that was like a period for me when I was just oh, addicted yeah. to World of Warcraft. I never got into World but, um, of Warcraft, but I don't think, and I don't think any of my friends did either. I don't think we were like, because that's like pure you know fantasy stuff i don't think i was like any of us were really into that we were just we were basically like basically all of elementary school and then through middle school we were basically all pokemon <laughs> and then eventually yeah, minecraft 
Yeah, for yeah. me, it was like it, it went from kids' PC games to Game Boy to DS, Wii, the Nintendo Wii for everyone, two PC games, and then this is when I event like I my brother in law. Uh, he lived with us for quite a while. Um, we basically we transformed one of my uh, the larger sheds into like a half house for my sister and her husband, my nice. brother-in-law. And he had an Xbox 360 from England because mm-hmm. he moved here from England. And he had this magnificent game called Gears of War 2. Mm. And he and my cousin played Gears of War 2 and the graphics for its, for its time are a bit shit. But I remember it just being an awesome shooter, but it also scared the shit out of me. Because nice. it's also qu- quite a freaky game if you p- play through properly. But uh, for some reason, I was just enticed with it. And then I got my first personal console, an Xbox 360 with Gears of War 3. And this is where I'm moving on here. Okay, so, yeah. So I'll I'll go ahead and like talk up to this point because we had an Xbox 360 at a certain point as well. Um, yeah, right, so no. yeah, so I uh, you mentioned black and white too. I actually didn't get into black and white too because I was too busy playing Pokemon Ranger at the time. So oh, um, yeah, I, I but actually recently, I like a couple of years back, I played Pokemon uh, Black two and I loved it. Um, yeah, Black two is probably like Black two and White two. Those are probably some of my favorite Pokemon games to date. Um, just yeah, be- pretty good. They're they really good. really good. Um, but yeah, so. I got into black and white a lot. I remember replaying uh, Pokemon White quite a few times as a kid, um, just because I loved the Unova setting as well. I don't think I liked it as much as Sinnoh, but I was just like, there was the the idea that it was like all brand new Pokemon, because Unova, the Pokemon black and white games, they were just, there was no old Pokemon. It was all new. So yeah. um, I was like, I was like kind of intent on learning about all the new Pokemon and stuff. So I played Pokemon White quite a few times. Um, for me, for me, it was Diamond, Soul Silver. Then yeah, Black. Soul Silver that was they, huge for me too. Soul Silver was awesome. Oh, they were, uh, just again childhood memories of me and my mate doing those little fucking what are those side games you can do at the stadium thing? Like those little extra games uh, to try po- and get points, like Pokeathlon or something. The Pokeathlon, yes. Yeah. But I just remember childhood memories, me and my mates played Pokeathlon just fucking all the time. It was nice. so good. Nice. That was good shit. Yeah. So that was, so, um, yeah, Soul Silver was awesome. Probably some of the best, like, Platinum, Pokemon, Black and White 2, and Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver are probably, like, all top tier Pokemon games. Um,. And then from there, we actually, and this was around the time I got a Nintendo Wii, the whole family, like, to share. Um, we we did play our fair share of Wii Sports, you know, Wii Bowling and all that shit. Um, yep. We did play our fair share of that. Uh, but probably the, the biggest one for, like, the biggest Wii game for me was Mario Galaxy, actually. Um, I oh, yeah. got into Mario Galaxy like huge. Like Mario Galaxy was another one of those games that captured my imagination as a kid. It was awesome. Like obviously Mario Galaxy is renowned as one of the best games ever made. It's just absolutely flawless. Um, Mario Galaxy 2 wasn't as good, but I still enjoyed it. Um, but the first one really like just absolutely enthralled me as, uh, when I was like whatever, like 11 or 12 maybe. Uh, maybe 10, I can't remember. But um, around that age was when I was into Mario Galaxy. And then from there, I kind of transitioned to PC gaming around middle school, which was, you know, 7th grade-ish, 8th grade. So I was 13 or 14. Um, and that's when I really got into a lot of Minecraft. And there's a, <laughs> lo- a, a lot of Minecraft, which I mentioned um, in the first episode. Um, so I won't really go into it here, but, uh, yeah, Minecraft was very big. And then from there, yes. and then from there we got the Xbox, which was, which saved me from the depths of Minecraft. God, I, I just remember 
like when I got into high school and when YouTube started kicking off and then yeah. Minecraft started kicking off, mm-hmm. I got, I didn't have my own computer at that point in time, so I didn't get into the Minecraft craze. Yeah. But um, one game I've been failing to, uh, I've been neglecting to mention, I, I just forgot and just remembered it. Yeah. Also during the PS2 era, I had SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. Nice. That was a f- fucking great game, but uh, like... It was weird, though, because I didn't go with the annual releases. For some reason, I, I, I just I didn't bother with them. I just yeah. every so often played 2006, and then somehow my mate got 2010 for uh, the Wii, and oh. it was fucking terrible because never never play a wrestling game on the on the fucking nintendo no Wii. It, it, no the traction, like the following was so bad the controls were oh, it was terrible Ew. but yeah, yeah every so often i played that wrestling game and that was good but um yes then we move to the 360 era yeah um as i said my first game gears of war 3 Still to date, my favorite Gears game. It was one of the biggest campaigns. It was clean graphics. It was a great story. Love Gears of War 3. Nice. And then this is when I found out that online play was a thing. You could play yep. online with people. And I got <laughs> Xbox like Xbox Live Gold for the first time. And I got Tekken Tag Tournament 2. And this is when I jumped back into Tekken. Nice. Um, Because I just remember you got DLC characters for going online. You got a bunch of other shit. And then for the longest time, I just played Gears of War 3 and Tekken Tag 2. Mm. And today, still some of my favorite games. And that's where I kind of dropped. Like, I dropped off Pokemon around the same time. Gotcha. And I just didn't play them. And then I, I just kind of had my Xbox games. But then I kind of, like, I, even though I had them, I just kind of zoned out of gaming a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, in more recent years, now that I've gotten... Look, because the 360, I think the time that I got into it was... Yeah, it was at its peak. But this was around the time where I had familiarized myself with a few series and I didn't really want to get out of them. Gotcha. I was just stuck. But then... Skyrim. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> then Ooh. the big daddy. <laughs> Skyrim. Yeah. This was about February 2012. So literally a couple months after Skyrim's release. Mm-hmm. My mate had a PS3. He bought Skyrim. He said, oh, uh, my mate told me this was a really good game. So we went back to his. I watched him play the first 20 minutes and I loved it. Nice. I needed to get my own, and I bought it, and Skyrim essentially took over my life for several years. I think I, I can blame Skyrim as the reason why I didn't keep up to date with more recent releases. It's because I was just wanting to play Skyrim. Nice. So, throughout high school, I played Skyrim. Like I, I played Gears and Tekken, and... I was happy. I didn't need anything else. Yeah. I didn't need any other games in my life. But um, yeah, as more recently, I, I, I got a, I got like one or two other Xbox games. Like I got a uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. That was pretty sick. It's mm. kind of like a yeah. hack and slash version compared to the, all the spy games of Metal Gear. Um, then when I got an Xbox One, I got a few Xbox One games, like I said, SAO Fatal Bullet. Yeah. And then a few others just here and there. But then I just mainly continued with Tekken. I got Tekken 7. I got Gears of War 4 and Gears 5. And then ge- even Gears of War Judgment for the Xbox 360. Now, <laughs> that was a low point because it, they, had, they had a really odd order of releases. They had Gears of War 1, Gears of War 2, Gears of War 3. Gears of War Judgment, which was kind of like a prequel to all of those Mm -hmm. based on different characters. Then Gears of War 4 and then Gears 5. I don't know why they took the of war out of the name. I'm still annoyed that they did. Yeah. But it happened. It's a thing. But um, yeah, then yeah, with Tekken, I I got Tekken 7. But then I thought, well, I haven't played Tekken 6 yet. 
I'll, I'll buy Tekken Six. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't great. Tekken Six wasn't great. But um, yeah, and like since then, I got Monster Hunter World. I haven't been able to get into it properly. I bought Elder Scrolls Online. Haven't been able to get into it properly. Yeah. I just there's just a few games that I'm happy with, and I don't really care about much mm. else. Like I'm just I am content. Yeah. Like, there are a few other small games which I'll play at for about a week because that's how long it takes to complete them, and then I'll just I won't think about them again. Like they will still be on my hard drive. Yeah, and they'll be there. But I'll let you talk about your 360 era games, yeah, and then I'll so, move on to that. Yeah. So 360, the first like very brief part of the my experience with the 360 was been mostly taken up with uh, Sonic games actually. So it was. It was Sonic 06. That was fun. I actually, okay, oh fun, fun fact. I actually, when I played as a kid, I was probably, uh, I was probably 13, maybe, maybe 14. I enjoyed Sonic 06 as a kid. And I still yeah. kind of enjoy it ironically to this day, and sometimes unironically, because there are good parts of it, but it's just the gameplay is just kind of shitty. Um, but I think it works given some of the level design or whatever. Like, they. They had the right idea, they just didn't... They just didn't... The end. Do like, it right. <laughs> yeah, they just didn't do anything correctly. Like, they didn't... I don't know. Anyway, Sonic 06 was a thing. I, I remember seeing it, like, the trailer for it when I was really young, and was like, holy shit, that's the coolest thing ever. But it wasn't the <laughs> coolest thing ever. And, uh, yeah, so that was a thing. And then I actually got into Sonic Unleashed, which was for the Xbox 360, which I had for the Wii, but the 360 version is, like, the proper full experience of it. Um, Sonic Unleashed is really good. Um, a lot, it, it gets a lot of shit for having the Werehog, which I understand. Uh, a lot of people couldn't get into the beat-em-up style, but I was really into it because I just got a lot of satisfaction of, from beating the shit out of people. So, um... Yeah, so that's that's what happened with the with so I really Sonic Unleashed is probably one of my favorite Sonic games. It's probably the fastest Sonic game. Like for some of the proper Sonic stages, you really have to be on your toes. Like so you mm. you will die. You will die. And uh it's it's kind of <laughs> crazy. So but yeah, um and then after that was my first person shooter phase. Um I got into Halo Reach actually. Halo uh, Reach is really yeah. fun. Um, just Halo go was on. a good series, but it was like I remember I went to a couple of mates places when they had Xbox and we played Halo. I enjoyed it, but I just couldn't get into it properly myself. But I, I do never, see the appeal. I of never Halo. enjoyed the campaign. I always enjoyed the online multiplayer just because I I like yeah. the fantasy element of it, um, where you have all these like plasma guns and shit. Um, I, I like Halo for the online multiplayer, and then Halo Reach had this Forge mode, which my friends and I spent a lot of time in. We did uh, these local uh, things where we would just all just fuck around and just make the dumbest shit, and it was really fun. Like, you could make anything you wanted, basically. You could use different building block pieces and make basically whatever you wanted. And, uh, you know, we would... And, we, you know, because there was plasma weapons, there was also levitating vehicles, which would go crazy, crazy fast. So we would spawn these... We would basically, a lot of times, like, some of the... Basically, to sum up, like, give you an example of what kind of shit we did, we would basically find... Like, go to this, you know, barren wasteland of a world, because that's where you... What you did in your... Uh, create your own level. So... And then we made a ramp that would just go off into like a huge ass it a hu go off a huge ass cliff and fall in the water which would immediately just destroy anything it, that it touched because it was basically considered out of bounds and so we would basically build a long ass giant ramp and we would use the pla <laughs> the floating plasma vehicles put someone on them and just fucking go as fast as we could off the edge and we thought it was the funniest thing ever we would just go off we would just absolutely go as fast as we could off the ramp and into the out of bounds area and at, when you crashed you would just everything would just explode and you would immediately die and your your carcass would just bend in all kinds of stupid ways we thought it was the funniest <laughs> thing ever um so for, halo reach for forge is um one thing i remember i i almost got the halo like collection for steam just because i wanted to play forge again 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was really fun. That was a stupid thing we did. And then eventually I got into the only Call of Duty game I proper got into was Black Ops 2. Um, we, my whole, basically my whole family, um, sans my mom, would play zombies. Um, we would have oh, four shit. player. My two brothers, my dad and I would play four player zombies. That was hectic. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh god, that reminds me. Fucking. And split Gears screen 3. zombies. Split screen. I'm mean, um, like split screen. How old is split screen? But it still is a thing. Yeah. But fucking. That that just reminds me. My my brother and my cousin in the living room. They had a split screen. And then me and my uh, my best mate in my room on a split screen, and they, we did four player horde on Gears of War three, and horde like a fifty wave, fucking massacre, and it was the hardest shit when we were kids, yeah. but it was so much fun, and we got it done. We finished it. We completed horde, and that was good shit. That, that that's what kind of reminds me of zombies. Like I, I get the appeal. Because it's just so entertaining, yeah. wave after wave, and you've got to fucking survive. That's essentially yeah. zombies, but for Gears, I'd just say it's Horde. But it was so much fun. Yeah. That shit was good. But Yeah, so that was that was the main game for Xbox 360. Was I played? I put a lot of time into Black Ops 2. I, could, I haven't really gotten into any shooters since. I, I've been like... Um, like I, I still enjoy shooters. Like uh, my friends and I played Call of Duty like a while back, and just like some online we played. I can't remember which one it was. We might have played like Black Ops Three or one of the newer ones. I don't remember. But um, it's like the shooters are still fun to play as long as you're with friends. Um, I, I've never yeah. gotten into like any of the campaigns for shooters. I much prefer like you know more fantasy Nintendo style games, or just Nintendo games, not Nintendo style games. But um, yeah. The the shooters are fun. I I just that was probably the game I put the most time into for Xbox was either that or um, Halo Reach. So that was that was that. And then like this was probably a little bit before the Xbox era, but I I vividly remember being in probably fifth grade. So I was eleven. Yeah, eleven. So um, and that was I think either the same year or the year after the 3DS came out. Obviously, we were 11 at the time. My, I met uh, one of my really good friends who I still am really good friends with to this day. Uh, one of my best friends I met in that fifth grade class, and he and I bonded over, bas we basically bonded over playing Pokemon. So, um, he, so we, there was this kid in our class who was basically from a super rich family, even though we lived in the same neighborhood. Like, our, both of our families were well off, but not well off enough to buy us whatever we wanted, you know, or either that or my, our parents were just better parents, you know? Um, yeah. so there was this kid in our class who had a 3ds and, you know, we were 11 at the time. We thought it was the coolest fucking thing ever. And we were like, you, can I <laughs> use it? It was just like, but, but it was like, and there was, you know, there wasn't a Pokemon game out for it at the time. Cause X and Y came out in 13 um, luckily by that time I had 3DS, but, um, yeah, we, we, we thought it was the coolest thing, because I can't remember what the launch titles were for the 3DS, but, um, you know, just the 3D effect, it hurts the shit out of your eyes. Like, if you, oh, if you yeah. want to keep your eyes, never use the 3D effect. You will die. I don't, um, I don't think anyone actually does anymore. No, like, I don't think anyone cares that's why, the 3D effect. That's why, like, when they made the, uh, the 2DS XL, that doesn't, it's basically just a 3DS without the... 3D thing because I didn't like the original 2DS design because it's just a fucking block. But the 2DS XL, where it has like the um, the fold thing, like you know, it just it folds like a regular DS, but it doesn't have the 3D effect. I was like, why didn't I just get that fucking get that? The 3D effect is fucking garbage. Yeah. It hurts the shit out of my eyes. Like it's just like it's, it's basically an original DS that can play 3DS. Yeah, games. it has That's a lot more processing wanted. power and stuff. But yeah, that mm. ugh. That was ridiculous. Anyway, um, that and then obviously I played a lot of 3DS games. Uh, X and Y, I got into a lot. Sun and Moon eventually when those came out. Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Mostly Pokemon, obviously. Um, That's how I got back into Pokemon, actually. Because like I, as I said, it was around the Black 2, White era. Uh, Black 2, White 2 era is when I shut out and stopped playing DS. Yeah. Um, it was when my mate got a 3DS and convinced me, hey, 
I'm getting Omega Ruby. You should get Alpha Sapphire and get back into Pokemon with me. And then I was like, fuck it, why not? And then I got back into Pokemon. It was through Alpha Sapphire. Yeah, nice. And then, yeah, then it was Sun and Moon, and that shit was good. So, Sun and yeah, Moon is good. But, uh, They're very different. I missed so you, out. you had to, like, actively... Because um, my my best friend, he wasn't super into, out like, uh, Sun and Moon, sorry. Just And I think a lot of Pokemon fans weren't necessarily into Sun and Moon as much just because it, they were so different. Like, you had to actively go in thinking that, like, it's going to be a different experience from what we're used to. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I really enjoyed yeah. Sun and Moon, and then I enjoyed Ultra Sun and Moon more. But um, yeah, I, I I missed out on the craze of X and Y though, because that shit was revolutionary. Yes. Like, that that was next level shit. And I missed out on that. Yeah. Like I have um, X now, but I still haven't completed it. It's still there. Nice. It's some. It's like I got a bunch of old. I've got a bunch of Pokemon games that. I got, I've got a few completed ones, then I've got a few ones which I'm like halfway through because I reset them. I've completed every single Pokemon game. I can, well, from Emerald up, I can yeah. say I completed every single Pokemon game. Yeah. But then, I, because I was in the resetting, retrying new things phase, I have a bunch of half finished games. Nice. So that kind of bothers me. But yeah. Eh. Speaking of. Ran- random memories that just popped into your head. Yeah. I've completely failed to mention the iPad generation oh, yeah. of gaming. Angry Birds, see, Fruit Ninja. No, see. Oh, Fruit Ninja. See. It's okay. For me, I'll, I'll tell you what it was for me. Um, Because in like in year eight, when we got into high school, for some reason, we all needed iPads. They wanted us to use iPads. That school thought it was the next level of technology and it could be easy for us to use on use to work. Uh, we mainly used it for games. Nice. So for, for us, or at least for me, it was, yep, Fruit Ninja, Jetpack Joyride, yes. all that sort of thing. But, um... At school, we all got into at least three games. Clash of Clans. Yep. We all had our own clans and we all had... It was fucking sick. Yep. Um, a game which I don't think... I don't know if you can still get it. I want to search it up later. It was called Nova 3. I've never it was heard of that one. basically the discount Halo. But, nice. <laughs> but it was still heaps of fun. Like, when you got... 12 people from your school playing the same Nova game. It was so much fun. Nice. And it was so good. And then a lot of us also did Minecraft Pocket Edition. Mm -hmm. We played Minecraft Pocket Edition. So much fun. But yeah, that was kind of my iPad mobile game generation of gaming. I don't really, I don't really play mobile games anymore. Neither do I. I got like one or two, like, the last one I got into property was uh, Ruby, Ruby Admitity Arena, but I even I only got into that because I got accepted for the closed beta. Like wow. since then, since then I haven't really played many mobile games. Like I've got a few, I just I'm not into it anymore. Yeah, I don't. But, um, it was mostly just Angry Birds for me, <laughs> as far as yeah. mobile gaming goes. Uh, recently, I got into Pokemon Masters. Uh, there's a there's a point in Pokemon Masters where you you actually have to do something like it doesn't it doesn't flow very well there's like a um like the story doesn't flow very well it 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 makes it kind of there's like a training option for your sync pairs or whatever and it's like they make it seem like it's totally optional but like i am at a certain point i think i'm at chapter seven in the pokemon master story and i can't fucking win for shit like (laughs) the level caps the thing is the level caps for three star sync pairs are at level 30 and you get the most recent like at, at the end of every chapter you get a, a rec- you basically recruit a either a three star or like something you, re- you recruit a new sync pair and at the end of chapter six you recruit karina karina and her lucario and you get her at level 29 so and like most of your sync pairs by this point are higher than level 29 like M- rosa thankfully is a five star so she c- caps out at level 100 so my like rosa and servine right now because i managed to evolve snivy once they're level like fucking 36 or something and so lucario fucking sucks 
I can't do anything. <laughs> like he takes a he t literally he takes a rock slide from a Geo dude and a Lowland Geo dude and fucking dies. Like I, I'm <laughs> so lost. Anyway, Pokemon Masters frustrates me. Uh, it's good. It's a good game, and I think it's fun. The patience you have to have for the thing to build up is annoying. But Pokemon Masters is fun for like if you want to get if you need if you're on like a plane and you need like a few hours of entertainment. Pokemon Masters is a good way to go about that. But once you get to a certain point, yeah. it's like what the fuck. Also, yeah. for Pokemon uh, mobile games, Magikarp Jump. That's fun. That's that's the pinnacle of, that. pinnacle of mobile games is Magikarp Jump. I I completely Incredible. forgot Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go exists. Oh I yeah, I completely forgot about that. I got it. I was into that for a couple months. Me and my friend got it on the day it came out in July. Like the day it came out in Australia in July 2016, we bought, we downloaded it, we played it nonstop till about mid 27. We played it for about a year. Then I like zoned out for a year, and then they introduced Sinnoh Pokemon, so I got back into it for six months. But now I'm out of it again. I can't be yeah. fucked. And they're just introducing Unova Pokemon now. Yeah. But, but I, I, I just yeah. My battery I've can't handle it anymore. Again. My my phone battery. Like anytime I have to do something taxing, like Pokemon Go, it just immediately fucking just drops. My battery life just tanks. I was I was one of those that like we we. Uh, I went around Rundle Mall, like a, a massive mall here in Adelaide that um, I went around with a power bank and then whenever both the power bank and my phone would load, uh, they, uh, the, like certain parts of the mall had like charging stations. Nice. So I'd sit there for about an hour, charge my power bank up and then charge my phone halfway up and then I'd keep playing Pokemon Go. Nice. Like, essentially, I'd catch heaps of Pokemon and while everything was charging, I would sift through all the Pokemon that I wanted to turn into candies. Yeah. So it was like, I, I had a system going, but I wasted so much time on Pokemon Go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nice. But um, now I think there's a couple games I wanted to mention, which I, I'm, I'm going to say for me, because like for me, I had the kid game era, which like the child game era, which was like Game Boy and PC. Yeah. Then it was ps2 and wii and ds then it was xbox 360 and xbox one yeah but then also for me there's also an era of a few games i played only because of the internet because i saw nice. what impact it had yeah three games come to mind i'm pretty sure there's more uh doki doki, doki literature club yep. uh delta rune because i'd never i i, I knew everything about undertale but i knew i was going to be shit at the mechanics so i was like well i'll just watch everything about undertale i'll play delta room mm -hmm. and uh celeste celeste is a fucking phenomenal game i really want to get into I that have, i haven't played it yet but i want I to i still haven't completed it but i know it's a phenomenal game i've got about halfway through and i love it yeah like, I, I did a trend plays on it and i was just enthralled with it i was like yeah, it looks incredible <laughs> this shit is just it's it's just, it's really, it looks like a simple concept, but then when it actually goes further, you're like, wow, there's actually so much more to this game. Yeah. It's just like, fuck. But, um, yeah. So those are a few games, which I'm going to say I got into thanks to the internet. Yeah. Um, I know there's more. I, like probably Skyrim modding I got into because of the internet. Uh -huh. There was a few YouTubers I watched that, um like showed off mods on skyrim and i was just like well i want that mm -hmm. so i when i uh built my first pc and had my own pc i got the skyrim anthology like all uh, no no the elder scrolls anthology so all the elder scrolls games up until this point and i got that and i had fallout 4 mm -hmm. and i played through them like on my pc that was a lot of fun but then i just yeah, I haven't, I haven't actually touched my computer on like my PC all of this year because Jeez. all I use it for is for gaming and even the specs are out of date, but like, I, I, I've just lost care for PC gaming. Like, I go through these phases where I'm like, oh, but I have this and this, but then it's just like, but I also got this, so why don't I just do this? Yeah. And like, I don't care for modded Skyrim anymore because I got Skyrim on my Xbox One. But I haven't even played Skyrim all of this year either because I've just it, 
I think I've replayed it enough to know all the lore, to know everything about it. But yeah. you ask me any question on Skyrim, I'll have hundred answers for it. I, I just that shit is burned into my memory. Nice. But um, yeah, for that brief period where I had PC gaming, I got like when I pulled out the the computer. Actually, no, tell a lie. I have touched the computer, but I only bring it back out for certain games like Koki Doki Literature Club or Delta Root. Mm-hmm. Like, if Delta Rune Chapter 2 gets released soon, I'm pulling out the PC. I'm bringing it back. But, um, yeah, it's just all right here next to me on the ground because I just I don't have any use for it. Gotcha. Apart from the one or two games that I might want to play if the internet tells me to. Right. But, um, yeah, so that's essentially the entire generation of gaming for my part. Okay. Um... I don't think I've got much else to talk about now. It's just like, that's all the games I had. I was basically my favorite series uh, series at the moment are Pokemon, Tekken, Gears of War. And if I, I'd, I'm still going to say Skyrim, but the hopes are not looking high for Elder Scrolls six. Mm. Thanks to Bethesda and their fucking shit antics. Cause, um, like, there was this whole thing about how, like... You, you know how Bethesda's all fucking up at the minute? Like, they did shit with Fallout 76 mm. and, was, and, like... I don't, yeah, I think I And this other game, that. I think it was Star, I don't, StarCraft? No, that hasn't been released yet. It was some other game they had. They released recently, and it was shit. And um, then they're not bringing back uh, the composer for Skyrim, uh, Jeremy Soul, but even then, allegations have come out against him about him being predator so it's Great. probably good that he's not coming back it's probably good that he's not coming back but still um but it's yeah that was that was a odd can of worms yeah but um yeah but just skyrim and like skyrim was a phenomenal thing i played it for five six seven years non-stop but now i've just kind of like uh now we're finally downturned Skyrim, and I'm just getting in. I've just been playing Gears Five, Tekken Seven, and just a few other games here and there, like Celeste. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the minute. And Pokemon, I still have all the games, all the DS games. Yep. I just I need a, I need time to con- to complete them. Like I I spent about a solid week where I played uh, Diamond every day and completed it. So so I have a complete Diamond here. But now I need to complete Pearl and Platinum. And because of the rumors of... Like, did I tell you about the rumors of the uh, Gen 4 remakes? Oh, I saw it on Twitter. Again? Yeah. So if no one else has heard this, which I'm pretty sure you have by now. Yeah, probably. Uh, this, I think it was like someone that's kind of a little bit behind the scenes. He knows a lot about Pokemon merchandise. And yeah, usually they're when doing the merchandise, a lot of merchandise related to Gen 4. Yeah, and he said usually when they bring they do a whole heap of merchandise around a certain generation, a game is going to be re- released sooner or later. Or announced, yeah. Like, apparently that's what they did for uh, Kanto Pokemon, and then Let's Go was announced. Mm. So I think I still haven't got a Switch. I'm still behind on that. But if Gen 4 remakes are announced after Sword and Shield, I'm going to get a Switch. Gotcha. I'm... 100% gonna hop on that bandwagon and also I should have money by then so that would be great yeah. so I actually have the money to buy a Switch yeah <laughs> that would be that would, that be, would be good but um yeah until then I'm just gonna take my time completing the DS Pokemon games that I haven't completed because I forgot um nice. and then yeah we'll, my I future can... in gaming is a little bit ambiguity like my, my future in gaming mainly just depends on my tastes like if i get into code vein great then I'll, there's another game for me there yeah but i'm gonna mainly just stick with what i know because i love the series and the stories behind them and yeah that's yep. that's, that's where i'm at all right I, i'll take it from here so you mentioned yeah, your you? um so you mentioned your phase where the internet told you to play games i had that phase as well yep. Um, I managed to, I mean, when I did this, I already knew everything about the game, but Undertale, I managed to get all three endings, um, 
It's actually up on the Silver Games channel if you're interested. I think I reported it when I was 16, 17. So, um, it was a little after the fact, like after Undertale had really blown up. But I did, I did, you know, I, I got the pacifist ending, got the neutral ending, and I got the genocide ending. And I left it at the genocide ending. My Undertale is still installed, and it's still got that black screen with all the wind. I haven't reset it. it I, haven't, I haven't done anything with it since then. Um, and I feel like that's a, a good ending. I don't really want to try anything after that. Um, I never... I, yeah, because yeah. If, you, if you do, then at the very end, it'll be like, haha, red eyes, you fucked. Yeah, cunt. exactly. And, and you know, I've gotten all the endings life. already. I don't think I need to do anything else with it. There's a lot to Undertale, but yeah. I'm I'm good. So, uh, but I, I did play Deltarune, I think, either the day of or the day after it came out. Really loved Deltarune. I think, um, I think... I enjoyed it probably more than Undertale just because I liked the mechanics more. Um, Undertale is an incredible yeah. story, but the the gameplay and the humor and the writing in Deltarune is just really good. There's a lot of like meta, you know, really clever things in Undertale. I just think the vibe of Deltarune I like a little bit more. And you know, a lot Did, of people. Now, oh, go ahead. I was, no, was going to say like on the off chance. Did you watch my trend players on Deltarune? I don't think I did. I don't think I watched the one on Okay, Delta. because if if you did, you would know that I fucking love Rousey, I think. Oh, <laughs> Rousey's yeah. adorable little... He's an adorable little fucker, and he's amazing. So, clap, clap yeah. for the fucking Rousey. Um, I, that, I, that, <laughs> literally, the entire episode, I'm just like, yes, Rousey. Yes, Rousey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was cool. great. Right. Anyway, continue. Yeah, so I think um, I never had an attachment to a uh, specific one of the characters other than Lancer. Incredible. Um, his it humor. I, I grew to him his, at the end. Yeah, his humor was end. incredible. I think he was kind of a pussy, but um, so I mean, you know, <laughs> but I, I so I didn't really get too. I wasn't too into his character, but I think his humor, just like the dry, like, like you're going to die. Ha 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 on the sign and shit. Lancer. <laughs> um, like, I thought that was oh, hilarious. Wow. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I think the dynamic yeah. works really well between the, th the three main characters as well. It's very unique. Um, well not, maybe not new unique is the right word. I think, but just overall it works well. Cause you know, there's obviously like a peacekeeper, an angry person and, um, uh, really, oh, yeah. yeah. So there's obviously like, that's been done before, but like, I think it, the writing is really clever. Um, I think it's just. And, you know, people speculated it's basically like D&D, &D. you know, like they enter from the closet or whatever, and all of a sudden they're in a fantasy world, whatever, and they manage to come back unscathed. Um, I think that's really mm -hmm. just the, the vibe of that is really cool, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, I never played Doki Doki Literature Club, but I did watch, I can't remember who I watched play it, but uh, it didn't quite capture my imagination as it did a lot of people. Um, I think it, it's really interesting, and it played with a lot of... Um, you know, visual novel and horror tropes as well. Like, just the psychological element to it is really, really interesting and well done. Um, but I never, I never actually played it um, for myself. Well, you want to hear, you want to hear behind the scenes exclusive on my uh, history with Doki Doki. Go for it. Basically, I kind of knew what I was getting into when I recorded the Trent plays. I, I think I had really good kind of. Like, they weren't fake reactions, but I like, I kind of knew what was going to go or what was going to happen, yeah. but it was still shocking nonetheless. But basically, with that, like, yeah, me and my mate Aaron recorded that for uh, for YouTube, and then I just went back and replayed it once just to see if anything would be different because I heard there was different shit about it, and then I heard that there's also like that bit before you delete Monica, where she talks and brings up random conversation yeah. and actually has really interesting questions to pose. Mm -hmm. So then I thought of releasing, uh, uh, this is when I try to get into live streaming. I thought I would try and stream or at least record myself. Um, whenever she asked a question, I would legitimately answer it to the camera. And yeah. it was actually, it went for an hour, but the questions she posed were really fucking interesting. Yeah. Like, it was, like, proper real-life, like, important shit that she would pose questions to. Yeah. So I legit get, sat down and gave my proper answers to those questions for about an hour, and I still have that footage somewhere. It's just, it's just sitting on my computer. So 
I thought that was really intriguing yeah. about Doki Doki. And then, like, and then later on, like, we got, we tried to get our mates to play as a prank. And that's how one of my favorite videos got released Doki Doki WTF, I think it's called. And it's one of my favorite videos I've ever made. Nice. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, Doki Doki was just a really interesting mixture of, hey, here's cute anime girls here. Then, fucking boom, your life is ruined, and uh, you know, watching There's a girl trying himself. to reach out of the screen. I'm scared. Yep. Oh, and then just the undertones of everything. Like, okay, look, Sayori's got depression. Uh, Hangs herself. Oh, what the fuck? Neat. Y y y yeet. Yuri cuts herself. Big oof. Um, it's hinted that Natsuki is abused by her father. Yay. Woo. It's just like fucking Jesus Christ. It's it, like the undertones of that are just like, oh, Jesus yeah. Christ, this is fucked. But oh, it, yeah. like, it makes you think. It it took off for a reason. Oh, yeah. And um, it's some real shit. I'm st they, they, they said that, that really that there was something about. um. I think I, I think I talked to you about it once about the game theory episode they did on it where there was like a code and a hidden message from yes, Monica about I've another game I've coming out into yeah it was about another game coming out in 2018 that never Look, happened. Um, obviously, I mean it's but, classic MadPad just looking too much into things for the fun of it. That's like the entire show. I, know, I, I feel like people this is a whole another episode, but yeah, people uh, hate on MadPad because he looks into things too much. That's literally his job and it's all for fun. You know, like he, he's yeah. like, "Oh, you think people are like, "Oh, you're thinking about it too much." Like, that's his job. That's how he got 10 million subscribers and it's all you for think fun. He's Sans is nest with yeah. the fuck we did. Yeah, people and like just like he thinks way too much into these things, people take it way too seriously. So that again, yes. that's a whole nother tangent. Uh, I personally, I think Matt Pat is an incredible role model for kids, and I think he's a great dude. So um, I think he's a great dude. Again, this is another episode, but just a quick opinion. I do think he's a great influencer, and he does a lot to to help communities yeah. and gaming and all that like i've seen a lot of his sit down videos and he does do a lot to help people yeah. there are one or two instances which i went over in a video as well um where i think he can be a little bit uh like he ignores an overall issue in favor of comedy um mm. If you, I'll tell you about it after the podcast. But um, if you if you go through my channel videos, you'll find one that says a message to GT Live, and uh, yeah, you'll see what I mean by watching that. But I'll talk to you about it after. Yeah. But um, yeah, that at certain points of time, I do feel like he neglects an overall issue in favor of something else and doesn't realize how serious that issue is. Mm. And it like not everyone can pay full attention to every problem in the world. And it makes sense, but in regards to his negatives to his positives, I, he does he has done a lot more positive than negative. Oh, yeah. Matt Pat, he's done a lot more to help. He people. just seems like a cool guy, like to be friends with. You know, he he, he seems like just that really smart mate that's also a nerd, and it's just like yeah. I'd love to have one of those, like they're just yeah. like just a really smart mate that's also a bit of a geek, but like that would yeah. be sick. Yeah, but he, overall, I do think he's a good bloke. Yeah, I think I, I just I really admire him for just all being intelligent and just I mean, just the way that he like goes about his uh, some of the jokes he does, you know, some of them fall flat, but um, just the way he handles himself like he knows his place. And as far as like comedy and like in the YouTube community and sticks to it, doesn't try to go outside of it. Um, so that's cool. I think he's just really awesome. So. Uh, just overall, but then as far as video games go, I'm trying to think what else other than uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, which I've played and they scared the shit out of me. Um, that was another one of those off off one games. Like I played Sister Location. That was the only one I completed. Like I tried the first yeah. one. I tried Pizza I beat the first three. Yeah, I beat the first like, three. The fourth one I couldn't beat. It scared the shit out of me, and I was terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for me, like, I never got into the FNAF craze when it first happened. Like, it, again, in the realms of Deltarune and DDLC, like, FNAF Sister Location was just another game I played, and I, I liked it. I thought it was really good, yep. but yeah, I haven't really gone much further. Yeah. Like, I, I know all about FNAF thanks to fucking the internet. Thanks, guys. Yep. 
I hate your fan art. Um, it's disturbing. Yeah, but um, anyway. Yeah, yeah this location I, was I, another one for yeah, me. Yeah, w- I'm kind of interested in playing. Uh, I think uh, Pizzeria Simulator is the one. I haven't played it, but um, that's probably that's what I'm interested in, just because there's so much shit you can do with it. But I yeah, like I said, I beat the first three, and then but the first one I played pretty soon after it came out, and it terrified me. I was 15 at the time. It terrified me. And, you know, when you're that age, it's like... Because I'm pretty, like... You know, I still get scared by jump scares, but, like... Just... The jump scares as a kid, like, the actual substance of the jump scares, like, watching them in slow motion and shit, that terrified me when I was, like, 15. And, you know, that was five years ago now. Um, Just, like... Oh, my God. The first one terrified me. I got through the second two, or the the, the next two. Those ones weren't as bad. Um, The fourth one, whoo, that one scared the shit out of me, and still does. It's just because you have to go up and listen for shit, and if you listen wrong or you're too impatient, you'll get scared the shit (laughs) out of. And it's like, not cool, dude. You listen incorrectly. Not cool, dude. No, you listen wrong. Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> and there's a bunch of random noises that could also be think like as breathing and then they're not breathing and you shine the light and you're fucking dead or whatever like I don't know I couldn't beat this the fourth one it scared the shit out of me um anyway aside yeah. from Five Nights at Freddy's um more recently uh as my graduation gift last year when I graduated high school I got a switch Woo! that was the best nice. decision I've made in my entire fucking life because the first game I played was Breath of the Wild, and goddamn, if that isn't my favorite game of all time, I don't know what is. Breath of the Wild is incredible. You don't need to hear it from me. Everyone said it. Breath of the Wild. I, everyone, everyone has said everyone it. Everyone has said um, it. Breath of the Wild is. It, 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 people have are calling it the best game of all time for a reason. It is my personal favorite game ever. It is absolutely incredible. You don't need to hear me say that. Um, Breath of the Wild is my favorite game ever. Um, I also played Mario Odyssey. Uh, Let's go Pikachu. I was I got into um, Mario Odyssey is incredible, by the way, as well. Not not on the Breath of the Wild level, but still incredible. Um, uh, other Switch games, Smash Ultimate, really like that. Um, I the, if I'm gonna get a Switch, uh, that I'm definitely gonna get. Uh, Breath of the Wild, Smash Ultimate, let's go. Yeah. Um, that they they're they're my main games that I want to play because yeah. they look awesome. And oh, that was that was another one for the fucking Wii. Sorry, I forgot to mention. I had Smash Bros. Brawl yeah, same for the um for the fucking Wii, and that shit was awesome because uh, when my uh, brother and my sister went to England for a year, he they had their own Wii, and we played online against each other once a week on Smash Bros. Nice, and that was so much fun because like I. I hadn't seen my sister for a year or my brother, but then we could catch up every week and just play games on the on the Wii, and that was nice. Fun. But um, yeah, so Smash Bros. I Brawl, loved that's Brawl my for only the uh, with Smash. That's I loved Brawl for the subspace emissary. Actually, it was kind of shit, and it wasn't really a story. And but my my best friend and I played the shit out of it. Like there was just everyone just go for it. Everyone gives it shit. I love I it. I think it's great. I love Subspace. It's, I think I love it because but, it's basically, it's the only thing in Smash where it's like an actual two-player story, like cooperative thing that you can do with a friend. And so my best friend and I, there were nights where we would just literally stay up all night just playing the Subspace Emissary just cause, and just have a fucking ball of a time. It was, it was great. Just because we could go through together just beating the shit out of random people. It was awesome. Um... And you know, the subspace Whenever emissary, like car, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the subspace emissary is one of those Whenever things, I, like where I'll you get it. into, like you're enthralled by it as a little kid, but then when you go back into it, you're only into it if it's like nostalgic for you. It's not something you get into yes. as an older person. No, yeah. no, it's definitely nostalgia driven. Like for me, I can go back and yeah, play same. It. Like I will gladly do that. But the Wii is somewhere at a cupboard. I don't know where, but um. No, I just, whenever I unlocked the car air, I would only use the car air. I just remember, Jesus Christ. But, um, yeah, the only experience with Smash I have is Brawl. I want to get Ultimate as soon as we get a Switch, just because it just looks like so much fun. It is, it's a lot of fun. But, um, My brothers, my two little brothers have not touched a Nintendo console since we got rid of the Wii in, like, 2012, 2013. Literally, we were on vacation to my grandma's house in Florida, 
they would wake up before me and go to my Switch and start playing Smash Ultimate. Like, they have not touched a, a Nintendo console since the Wii, and they would literally get up before me just to use my Switch and play Smash Ultimate while we were on vacation over Christmas <laughs> break. It was... I was a sight to behold. Um, so, yeah, that was... Um, that was crazy. Uh, so, Smash Ultimate's a lot of fun. I... A couple other games... Do I, I I'm trying to think of the other games I have. My Switch is, like, just outside. I could probably go get it. But, um... Other games I was into... Uh... I'm trying to think. What else did I fucking get? Um, I've gotten a few games recently. Um... I got Cadence of Hyrule, which I haven't beaten. I cannot figure that game out to save my goddamn life. <laughs> but Cadence of Hyrule is really fun so far from what I've played. It's like, uh, the dungeon... The Zelda crawler and shit... Um, you, you move to the beat of the music. It's really cool. Um, I'm, you know, you may think, oh, you're really good at it because you're a musician. No. <laughs> no, I sh I'm shit at it. I, sometimes I'll just like, because when I play a game, right, I want to move however I want to. But so I'll try to move before the beat and it's like, miss the beat. And I'm like, fuck off. I just let me move, <laughs> god damn it. And, um, so yeah, I'm actually I may be a musician, but that does not mean I can keep the beat. Uh, I mean it does because I have many a time, but like when it comes to video games, I'm just like let me goddamn move. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's the thing. Um, one of the games, one of the games. Uh, actually, I've I failed to mention my history with Zelda. I um I originally got into Zelda because I got an emulator N64 emulator and I wanted to play um, Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time for my gaming channel which I did they're still they still exist you can find them um and those two games in like I the the thing that I regret about playing those games is that and this was probably f for the best as far as the YouTube series go but I in retrospect I wish I had just played them by myself cuz what I did was I used a guide I basically knew everything that was going to happen beforehand. Yeah. And that was a mistake because Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are both absolutely incredible Zelda games. And to really get the full experience, you have to experience them for yourself. You have to get lost. You have to have no idea what you're doing for a certain period of time and eventually figure it out somehow. I like see, the, the open world element of Zelda is incredible. I see guides as a thing to help you, like get many collectibles or unlock achievements i don't see guides as a thing to use to get through the story or the campaign or anything like that i never yeah. use guides for such a thing because I, I i want to experience the story as soon as it happens like you want to you want to talk about yeah. times where you've cried during video games the only time i've cried during a video game is when dom died in gears 3 spoilers <laughs> i should have said nice. spoilers but because the the way the story's built because i went back and played gears one and two and it hit even impact even more impact the second time dom was the one that released the main character marcus from his jail cell um and then they became best mates throughout the whole series and uh yeah. dom was looking for his wife found out and in gears two his wife was dead and he basically hit a little bit of a depression and to save everyone he sacrifices himself and it's like literally one of the most emotional endings to anything it is so nice. fucked but like yeah. yeah it that's one thing i don't like about guides i just don't like them spoiling things I, that's why i that's yeah, why i just the problem was for zelda games and i still want to there's still uh, zelda games i want to play um twilight princess and some other ones that I that I want to get into. Um, but the thing is, for Zelda games, the open world element will just get you lost immediately. And I didn't want to have to deal with all the editing I would have to do if I had no clue what I was doing. So, I, I basically, I just wish I hadn't recorded them. I wanted to... I should have got in, like, just gone in and just figured it out by myself without having to worry about recording it for YouTube. Thankfully, that's what I did with Breath of the Wild. I avoided spoilers for over a year and a half... Um, and eventually I got into play Breath of the Wild. Um, I, the only thing I knew coming in was basically, like, about the Calamity. That was literally the only thing I knew going in. Like, the, the final boss was Calamity Ganon. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what that meant. I just, I just, that's the only thing I knew. And I am so thankful that I didn't spoil the, the game for myself. Because, holy shit, Breath of the Wild is great. Anyway, um, 
yeah, so that was my history with Zelda. Any other? Go, go ahead. Any other Switch or Zelda games you would like to yeah, bring up so before I, um, we wrap up? Yeah, so I played up? Wind Waker, which was really fun. Um, I'm so excited for the Breath of the Wild sequel, obviously, as everyone is. Um, that's yes. going to be incredible, I'm sure. Um, what else? Um, recently, I got into playing... Uh, I haven't beaten it yet because I suck, but I played Link <laughs> to the Past, and um, Link to the Past is one of is probably the, I think the only 2D Zelda game I've ever played. Um, I really am only specifically interested in the 3D Zelda games just because I think the open world stuff is really a lot more like you. There's a lot more chance for you to get into the open world element and just kind of really get yourself invested into the setting and the 3D environment. But Link to the Past, uh, I was interested in playing it because um, I think I, w I wanted to try a 2D Zelda because I never played one before, and Link to the Past was the one I wanted to try because people usually call it the best one out of the 2D Zeldas. So it's been really fun so far, but again, I, and I did most of it without a guide, but there are certain points where I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm like wandering around with yeah. no idea what the hell I'm supposed to do. And for the for the most no, part, and enough. Breath of the Wild fixed that they have like you know guide points for you, which thankfully they did because goddamn that world is huge. Um, but so y if you didn't have guide points in Breath of the Wild, you would be lost for goddamn ages. Um, but thankfully, Link to the Past kind of has that to a, a slightly lesser extent. They basically have like here's where you need to go and here's what you need to collect. And you basically just have to to go there, and you have no clue how to, like, the dungeons, there's no, like, active missions, you just have to go in the dungeons and get the shit. How you do that, how you get through the dungeons, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, yeah, so I haven't beaten it yet, and I want to beat it soon. I almost, I'm also looking to get into the Link's Awakening remake, which actually came out last week. Um... I want to try the I want to try that because the Link's Awakening is another one of the 2D Zeldas that's supposedly really good. Um, I don't know much about it, but uh, it came out for the Switch recently, um, so I want to get into that. I wanted to get into Hyrule Warriors, which was also released for the Switch, the Deluxe Edition or whatever the fuck. Um, that looks like a lot of fun. I was I was absolutely I like loved the trailer the, from the, uh, when it came out like 2015 or something, but I didn't have a Wii U, so. Um, yeah, Hyrule Warriors looks really awesome. Just beating the shit out of a ton of little bitches. That looks awesome. Uh, and then, recently, as far as, like, getting into games go, I recently got into playing Xenoblade Chronicles, which is... Um, Xenoblade 2 is out for the Switch. Um, I've, I wanted to get it. It was on sale, like, one of the days, and, like, everyone was saying how good it was. Like, go get this game. And it was, like, 20 bucks off, and I was like, I went to go get it, and then it was gone. <laughs> So, I've I've heard a lot of good things about Xeno Xenoblade Chronicles. I've heard a lot of good things. Yes. Yeah, so that. I recently got into playing the first one. It's on the Wii. Um. So I'm playing it on Dolphin Emulator. Uh. It's really fun. I have uh like I have a, a sensor bar and a Wii remote and nunchuck and everything. So um thankfully I am able to upscale it to 1080p so it doesn't look like absolute anus balls. But um yeah <laughs> it's uh. It's it's really fun so far. I think I've put in like five ish hours in into it. Um, spoilers. I've uh, I've gotten to the part where the the chick dies. I forget her name. Um, but literally, Oof. apparently, it's like a 60, 70 hour game. Literally five hours into the game, some like literally your love interest is dead. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's great. You love. Yeah. Hate to she see was it. cute too. Jesus. Such a shame. But um. God damn it! Yeah, so well, I hate it when a I hate well I hate it when an ugly love interest dies, but when a cute one dies, God yeah, damn geez. it! Yeah, jeez, that's just that's the that's worst. Just, that's just unfair. So yeah, that's what I've gotten into <sighs> recently. I I because when I get, went to play when I went to get Xenoblade Two and it wasn't there, I was like, huh, this is probably a message from Jesus telling me to play the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus is probably like, dude, you haven't even played the first one. You're trying to get the second one. Go back and play the first one. So I was like, fine, dude. That's why I felt okay, like, that's why I, I get it. That's why I felt like a dick half the time. Like, I go back and remember, oh, yeah, I got back into all these games when they're all like halfway through their yeah. series. It's just like, oh, well, I bought all the originals and I've replayed them now. Like, I've, I've played the entire series for all my games all the way through. Yeah. So don't hate me now. But um, 
we are an hour and 35 minutes in yeah. is there anything else you'd like to bring up before no we i think i'm pretty much good i'm i will definitely i'm looking forward to playing more xenoblade um that's my primary goal at the moment to play xenoblade i also want to beat uh cadence of hyrule as soon as i can i don't think it's a very long game uh there's a gdq event going on right now some dude beat it in 40 minutes so i think i can beat it oh shit so i think i can beat it but uh yeah we'll see what happens um also in the future i'm another game i want to get into is river city girls which i yes. think i'm gonna play with my best friend when i go visit him i've heard good um, things we're about gonna that do, we're gonna do local co-op i think we're gonna try river city girls that should be fun um yeah that's the one whose soundtrack is done by like night and a lot isn't it uh not the whole soundtrack actually he only did a couple songs okay fair uh, enough. but he released it under he released it under give heart records and uh yeah, he did he did the um intro song and then he sung and composed the outro song. The outro song is actually a banger by the way. It's the humor in the in River City Girls seems like a lot of fun. Um yes, it yeah, does look very the, good. The the banger the the ending song which Nate sings is like some of the lines in it are just awesome. Like basically this the story of the song is this dude who is looking for a uh, a love basically a girlfriend, but he wants a he only wants a girlfriend who can basically kick the shit out of him and um like maybe it turns him on or something i don't know but he's like (laughs) there's this one line where he's like last night i took my boo out for a nice romantic date i went to pay the check and she cracked my skull with a pasta plate the fuck (laughs) and then i don't i don't mean no harm but she said i don't mean no harm and then she broke my arm oh bars Yay! <laughs> Jesus bars. Christ, bars. That's the kind of that's the kind of humor that's in River City Girls. So I, I'm I'm excited to play it. Um, I think I'll probably play it next weekend. So that'll be fun. Anything else for you, Trent? No, I believe that's it. That like other than looking forward to maybe playing Code Vein. Like I'm mainly just I'm um, keeping up to date with the series I like. And um, yeah, yeah, there's one or two games that stick out to me. I'll definitely get it. But when I get a Switch. Oh boy, I am. Uh, I'm buying as many games as I can. Oh yeah. Anyway, hey, hey, when you play Breath of the Wild, come back to me and tell me it's not the best game ever made because it is. All right, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, anyway, well, thank you everyone so much for listening to our podcast. Make sure to shout at us podcast. on Twitter and Facebook. Oh, definitely um, uh, at Firestorm at Podcast. Uh, we only at, accept at Firestorm we only Pod. accept tweets and replies that are in all caps. Not, not really. But we <laughs> we will make that a rule just from now on. But um, yes. So Firestorm Pod at Firestorm Pod on Twitter yep. and Facebook. Be sure to check us go out. Go shout there. at us. If, yes, go shout at us. If you want to send us any emails with uh, topic ideas for podcast episodes, uh, submit Firestorm us questions product, too. Ask us shit. Yes, and questions. We might do a question and answer segment sometime in the future. We never yes. know. Um, Firestorm Productions two at gmail dot com. Yep. No and, caps, uh, and that's the number two. Yeah, so, oh, no yeah, capitals send, this time. No capitals yep. this time. And um, also, so, yeah, send us an email. We are also we are on SoundCloud as well. So if you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, check us out on SoundCloud. Or One if or you're other. here from SoundCloud, we are also on YouTube. Yes. Oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I keep forgetting our target demographic is usually is usually YouTube, but I'm yeah. on SoundCloud this time. Yeah, we're right, also we'll, so we're on both platforms. Uh, eventually, we're looking to kind of expand. We I we did some research into podcast hosting websites. None of them are very lucrative. They're like no. have data layer, like uh, memory limits and stuff. I'm like, what the fuck? I just want to post all of my shit. And yeah. You know, anyway, yeah. So go follow us at Firestorm Pod on Twitter and Facebook. Um, we will tweet dumb shit. Um, and if it's on Facebook, it'll usually be Trent that are posting. Yeah. I don't really use Facebook, so um, yeah. Go, go follow us. And yeah, thanks for listening. And yes, we'll see you, you probably next week. Yes. With thank you very much for listening. Episode. Yeah. Yep. All right. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Bye. Will you...